All right, here's number six. A planet orbits a star. The distance from the, uh, from the star to the planet is 450 million kilometers. The time the, the planet uh, takes to orbit, uh, sorry, the time for the planet to orbit once is measured to be um, 3.2 years. Find the mass of the star. All right, so th in this particular case, okay, so you notice I've, I've already um, kind of done this, uh, done this out. Um, so so what, what we have to do is um, we have to change everything into the proper units, all right? So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use um, not Kepler's third law, the modified, but we're using what's called the modified version of Kepler's third law. All right, so let, let me, you know, that's, that's of course on our equation sheet. Let me, let me write that out by hand um, just, just to indicate that, all right? So it's uh, the math, oops, sorry, gotta make sure I did that right. All right, so the, so the mass is equal to, um, so it's four times pi squared, right? Um, four pi squared times the distance cubed, all right? Uh, divided by big G, which is called the universal gravitational constant. Um, and But then you divide by the period squared. All right, so, so um, squared. Uh, so so this, that, this is the mass of any object. Um, if you have something orbiting something else, you can figure out what the mass of the object that is being orbited. All right, so, so in this case, it's a planet orbiting a star, so we're figuring out the mass of the star. So the, the, the trick about this is, is the following. Let me make sure I go over all of these things, and, and, and I'll, I'll re, we'll, we'll redo this problem, or I'll, I'll show you this uh, over. Uh, M is going to be in kilograms. All right, so for example, um, this is just, you know, just, just uh, the, the mass of our sun, the mass of our sun is 2 times 10 to the 30th, that's supposed to be a 3, 30th kilograms, all right? So, so uh, and, and that, that's how we know that, is using the modified version of Kepler's third law. We can figure this out. And by the way, it was Isaac Newton who came up with this formula. The mo he's the one who modified um, this um, less than 100 years after after uh, Kepler came up with the original, um, you know, uh, a cubed equals p squared, which which you can still see, right? The the the, the d here is is the a, um, all right. But but any at any rate, uh, the d has to be the d in in our case the d has to be in in meters, right? Meet maybe you need to draw that uh, meters which is just given the symbol little little m and then the period has to be in seconds all right so uh, given the symbol s all right so so that's th those are the proper units so so notice um, in this particular problem we weren't given um, the 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 the, uh, the the distance in meters we were given in kilometers all right so here let me write let's let, let me show you that first. So, so the distance is 450 uh, million, all right, which, so I'm, remember, instead of writing times 10 like this, times 10 to the 30th, I, I'm going to just say, like, you know, the, I'm just going to use the E symbol. It's just a lot easier. Um, and, and million is times 10 to the 6th kilometers. And so if you know, like your metric prefixes, for example, kilo means 10, 10 to the third. So one kilometer, one kilometer is 10 to the third. That's supposed to be a three, sorry. 10 to the third meters, all right? So the kilometer part cancels. And so look, if, if you say 10 to the six times 10 to the third, it's the same base. All you do is add the exponents, all right? So that's pretty simple to do. So it's 450 times 10, right? That's what the E means, times 10 to the ninth meters, all right? So you can you use that 
in the modified version of Kepler's third law right there. So we're going to cube that in just a moment. All right, so uh, here, let's, let's, uh, let me get some room here and, and we'll, we'll, uh, so what, what I'm going to do now is convert, so, and I, I've already done this right here. I, I'm going to convert um, the, uh, the, um, the period uh, to seconds, all right? So here, here. All right, so, um, you know, we, we've already calculated the period in, or I'm sorry, the, the distance in, in meters. All we did was convert from kilometers to meters. So we did that right here. And now what I have to do is convert the number of um, the number of years to seconds. All right. So I know that um, in one year there, of course, are three hundred and sixty five point two four days. And then, all right, the years cancel. Um, and then I just say, oops, I didn't mean to write another parentheses. Um, so and then uh, you just say, all right, well, there are. Um, in, in one day, there are 24 hours, right? And you just keep going, right? Um, in one hour, there's 60 minutes. And notice I'm using M-I-N for minutes. Um, that's to distinguish it from the M that we use for meters, all right? So always use M-I-N for minutes. Um, all right, and then we, see, we know that in one minute, one minute, there are 60 seconds. All right, so, so uh, the minutes cancel, the hours cancel, the days cancel, and of course, I've already canceled the years. All right, so, so let's get my calculator, let's get our calculator out. And um, all right, so here we go. All right, let me move it over here to get a little bit better. Um, so it's 3.2 times 365.24 which I don't think that's the I don't think I originally did it that way, but uh, it's, it's important to keep that 0.24 in there times 24 times 60 times 60 again, or I'm just going to square the 60 equals. All right, so that it's that many seconds, right? So, so uh, you, you don't need to write that down, but um, just just make sure you 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 stored that. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually store that in my calculator. All right, so I'm gonna use it a little bit later. So it, I just hit this memory recall. See, there's the number. All right, so in in fact, we're gonna have to square it. Um, but but I'll, but I'll do that at the I'll do that at the end. All right, when we do. Uh, so, all right, so 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 we have that number, right? Um, I mean, it's it's a big long number, but uh, right here, actually here. Let me let me just let's look at it for a second. Um, all right, so uh, if we look at it, it is, uh, what do I get? One, two, three, one, two, three. So, so it's about one times 10 to the eighth, right? So, so that's, that's the number of seconds, right? In 3.2 years, it's approximately 1.0, right? Because it's, there's, no, there's nothing after that, right? Um, in our, with our calculator, uh, 1.0, uh, one, if, if you round, we're not gonna, I don't, you don't have to round it, right? So uh, 1.0 times 10 to the eighth seconds. All right, so I, I'm just writing that down just so that we have something. I, I already have it in my calculator. So you, you don't, don't round anything until the end, until the final calculation, okay? So, um, so we're gonna use these numbers Again, we're going to use the unrounded numbers in the modified version of Kepler's third law. All right, so now we're ready to go. The mass is equal to four times pi, pi squared times the distance, which which is exact here, four five zero times ten to the ninth raised to the third divided by big G, which is the universal gravitational constant. So its number is six point six seven times 10 to the minus 11th times, and both, both of these have to be in the denominator, times, all right, so, so, so this is the period, but I'm gonna use the unrounded version in my calculator. Um, so it's 1.0 roughly times 10 to the eighth, and you have to square that. All right, so that's what we're going for, all right? So, so uh, I'm gonna try this in my calculator. Let's see, where's my 
Um, this is not the greatest calculator, just to let you know. Uh, all right, so uh, here we go. All right, 450. I'm, I'm going to do this part first. Uh, times 10 to the 9th, EX, e to the 9th. So, so now I'm going to raise that to the third power. All right, so, so that's, that's a huge number. And then times 4 times pi squared. I right, get the square of the pi. Let's see if there's square. There it is. All right. Um, equals. All right. Well, so, so, so now, now look. So when, when I do this, I've got to do. It's, it's. It, I've got two things in the denominator. So I've just done the entire numerator. So now if I divide by big G, I've partly done the problem. All right. So you can do this in, in multiple ways. Okay. So the. For this particular calculator, it's easiest to just do it in parts or, you know, do do divide by this, divide by big G first, and then divide by the period squared. You divide the answer by the period squared because um, this, this calculator is kind of a pain, um, but it's all right. A anyhow, um, all right, so, so that's, that's the, uh, that's the answer. Is that right? Let's see. Equals. All right. So, so, so that's that's the numerator. All right. Divided by uh, big G, which is six point six seven times ten to the. I, I hate this calculator because you, you're not really supposed to. You, there should be like a little. Oh, there it is, right there. The little plus minus by minus eleventh. All right. So, so. There's uh, one that that's big G, six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven. That's the universal gravitational constant. It's been the same value since the beginning of the universe. And then now I'm going to do so. So I've done that. All right, I hit equals. All right, but that's not the answer, right? I still have to divide. I still have to divide by the period squared. All right. So remember, I in my calculator I stored the period. because it's this is not the best calculator in the world all right so divide divide that answer by um, memory recall all right but remember I have to square that all right so because that's the period so if I square that and then hit this that uh, okay so um, look <laughs> You yeah, see, this is this is the problem with this calculator is it's not turning it into scientific notation. I need it to be in scientific notation. Hold on, let me let me show you. All right, so, um, so so th this number it it should be um so we're, it says to round it to uh, one place past the decimal. All right, so what in scientific notation this would be five point three, and so if you move the decimal you know, until it's right after the five, right, it should, it would look like this over here. Okay, so I have it right here. So it's 5.3 times 10 to the 30th. All right, so um, now I'm going to prove that to you right here. So if I take this, if I take this number and I divide by, I mean, you don't have to do this. I'm just trying to show you that this is indeed times 10 to the 30th, right? Um, or, you know, this is going to be 5.3. Two eight, so I'm going to round it to five point three times ten to the thirtieth. All right, so if I divide it by one times ten to the thirtieth, I should get the you know five point two eight nine. Right, so you see that 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 tells me that that was times ten to the thirtieth. All right, so um, so rounding it one place past the decimal in and doing it in scientific notation, it would be five point three times 10 to the 30th. And that is problem number six. All right, so these these modified versions of Kepler's third law, um, they are the probably the most complicated thing that we're going to, they, they, no, they are. They are the most complicated thing that we're going to do um, as far as these these uh, different formulas that we have. Um, just, to, just to let you know, you've done, if you, you can get through this, um, that that's as complicated as it gets. Okay, so everything else is, is pretty straightforward.
I mean, that's pretty straightforward too. It's just lots of steps.